now for the Santa Cruz Heckler. At 47.3 pounds, this one stacks up really well in the weight game, coming in 1.5 pounds less than the Trek Rail. On trail, the Heckler was hands down the most eager to tackle rowdy sections. It really stood out with its general brabability. It doesn't matter what's in front of you, this bike has it handled. The additional low central mass of a motor and a battery paired with that buttery smooth lower link VPP suspension blew our minds when changing directions in various situations of smashing. It has a remarkable ability to hold a line at pace in a wide variety of terrain with top-notch stability. The progressive suspension design also provides much more playfulness and pop than you'd expect for a 47 pounder. Corners are an effortless hoot as well. Just lay the heckler down and hang on. With an in the bike feel, this thing rips. Somewhat surprisingly, we actually found the 27.5 plus tires to be a big benefit when run at the higher pressures that an e-bike warrants. The tires help provide ample traction at all times, accelerate and decelerate quickly, and the added rubber helps absorb bumps better. The build is really well sorted with a DH rated reserve rear rim, SRAM code brakes, and a Fox 36 fork. Santa Cruz's pricing was also the most affordable in our lineup when comparing it with an equivalent mountain bike, the Bronson. The bike's Shimano Steps E8000 motor provides up to 70 newton meters of torque and 250 watts of power, and its feel would be great for a wide range of riders. The motor gives a strong initial boost with lots of early grunt that will really help get things moving. On the weakness front though, the motor signs off pretty quick and it lacks much top end assistance almost like it has more to give and it's being held back by programming. When directly compared to the Bosch powered Trek rail, the Shimano motor is at a noticeable disadvantage in overall acceleration and steady pull. We found that it can fall a bit flat on steeper, punchy climbs. The Heckler's relatively slack seat angle also led to some loop outs on some really steep stuff. There's a lot going on in the shock area, which could make it harder to clean and service. We also felt the need to swap for a shorter 35mm stem to lessen a bit of the front wheel pushing and wandering that we felt through turns early on. Finally, with no extender option and a smaller 504 watt hour battery relative to the other full size EMTBs, this was also the first bike to run out of power. Riding it while dead and pushing it uphill are both very taxing and certifiably suck, so keep range in mind if you're a big distance rider. The dead battery guy. It's when you feel like you have no friends. I'm all alone. All my friends have battery. Range, zero miles. <laughs> Got a burrito by chance? <laughs> the motor's trail and boost modes are sweet, but some added eco mode time should definitely be a consideration on this Watt Guzzler. The battery is removable though, so you could carry a full size spare if you wanted. Sean Grizz McClendon. What's your favorite bike in the bunch? Come on in. The Santa Cruz Heckler. Uh, first and foremost, the reason being, I had the most fun on this bike. Uh, I also confirmed that I'm a 27.5 wheel guy. Um, this bike just did everything that I love to do really well. Cornered great, had great pop. Um, was easy to manual considering what the machine is. Um, Again, I would love to put the Bosch motor in this bike as well, but I think all around fun factor, Heckler takes the cake. My favorite bike was also the Santa Cruz Heckler. I really enjoyed it. It's 100% stable, progressive, reliable feel. You just point this thing and freaking shoot. Overall, if there was an e-bike that could convince the diehard mountain biker to like these electric toys, it may well be the Heckler. We love that Santa Cruz brought this name back embodied in an e-bike. It carries all of the original Heckler attitude to a new era, and it did a number on our perception of e-bikes. Climbing is easier and going downhill, you're gonna be filled with new levels of confidence as you plow through rough stuff with loads of comfort. This one is incredibly stable with great pop, excellent small bump compliance and big hit reserves, plus a strong part spec. Be sure to head to vitalmtb.com for a full spec comparison, suspension analysis on all the bikes, and relative performance ratings. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to smash that like button, hit subscribe, and we'll see you on the trails. That was it! <laughs> <laughs>